Let's shift our attention over to the toolbox, which is this vertical strip of buttons that sits on the left-hand side of your UDK interface. Now, the toolbox is broken up into a series of collapsible subsections. So if you click on the little tiny black triangles located in each one of these sections, you can collapse them down if you just need to clear up some room. Though at the default resolution, which is 1280 by 1024 for UDK, it's not going to take up the whole strip anyway. So you should be good to go there. Now, what do these sections do? Let's just kind of keep things very high level, at least for starters. We have the mode area, which allows us to change the mode that UDK is in. We have the primitives area, which allows us to change the red builder brush into a variety of different shapes to create geometry for our level. We have our CSG area, which allows us to create additive and subtractive brushes, as well as intersect and de-intersect the red builder brush. We have the special air and volume area, which is what I'm just going to kind of designate it. It allows us to add special brushes, which are more of a legacy issue than anything you'll probably find yourself using very often, as well as the add volume button, where you can create all of the different types of volumes for your level. And then finally, we have a visibility area. Now, what I'm going to do just in this video is just focus kind of on the mode area and give you sort of a, a higher level description of what each one of these modes are for. And then as we move through different videos, we'll kind of take a look at each one of the different uh, sections of buttons underneath that. So up here at the very top, we have camera mode, which is your default mode for UDK. Now, just to kind of show it off, I come over here to file, open, and let's just grab, say, VCTF Necropolis. Once this loads in, currently we are in camera mode, which is where you spend most of your time in UDK. It just means that we're just moving around, uh, manipulating objects, kind of doing the, the general routine. Now, geometry mode is a little different. Geometry mode is right next door to camera mode. If you click on that, you're going to get the geometry tools window. And this allows you to select a BSP brush and edit it as if you were looking at a modeling package. And actually, to make this a little bit easier to see, let's just go to File, New, and we'll just do a new additive level. And the reason we're doing that is that means we'll just have a little red builder brush to look at. And I'm going to maximize the perspective viewport just so that things are nice and big. Now, I'm still in geometry mode. So if I click on the red builder brush you'll notice the polygons of the brush actually get shaded a bit and the vertices of the brush become highlighted. So we can click on one of these vertices and we can now move it around, thereby changing the shape of the brush a bit. Uh, we can grab an edge, or in this case I grabbed a polygon, and we can move the polygon. If we click very carefully right on an edge, we can also select and manipulate edges as well. Now geometry mode is one of those things that you could spend uh, entire section of videos just covering and that's what we're gonna do so I'm not gonna go too much further into it here for now let me just go ahead and reset this back to its standard cube and we'll move on to terrain editing mode now terrain editing mode is really only useful if you have a terrain so let's go to file and let's open up a new level no let's grab VCTF sandstorm sandstorm's got a, a big batch of terrain all across the floor being the sandy stuff here now what I'm gonna do is jump into terrain editing mode now, this gives you a wide variety of terrain tools that allow you to control the texture that is placed on a terrain, the elevation at any given area, and it's a brush-based system, meaning you can paint different layers of elevation, you can paint different textures right onto the surface, and again, it's one of those things that's kind of worthy of its own set of videos, but just as a quick demonstration, I'm going to come in here and grab the paint tool from the tools group. I'm going to take my radius and kick that up to somewhere around maybe 300 something, oh, this is close to 400, but that's okay. We'll give it a little bit of fall off as well, and I'm gonna slide the terrain editing uh, window kind of out of the way. Now take a look here inside the viewport. You'll see that my cursor is this great big circular thing. Now if I hold down the control key and I left drag, so dragging with the left mouse button, you see I can change the terrain. So I'm actually pulling terrain up. If I hold down control and right click, I can push things back down. So if I want to reshape terrain, I can do it in this way. Now there's other tools as well. For instance, I could go to smooth and hold down control and left click and I can smooth out my results. So if you want to make a different version of this map with different terrain, this is one way that you could do it. Now let's get out of terrain editing mode and let's take a look at texture alignment mode. Texture alignment mode allows you to 
move the textures across a BSP surface in an intuitive manner rather than having to click on buttons or punch in numbers. So it turns out this little walkway up here is a BSP surface. So here I am inside texture alignment mode. Now I'm going to jump over to camera mode just to show you the difference. As soon as I go into texture alignment mode, we get this little transformation widget available right here. This allows me to move the texture that is on this BSP surface. So notice as I move it in Y, it slides this way. As I move it in X, it slides this way. I can tap the space bar and go into the rotation widget, and I can rotate this texture around. So we could push it all the way to somewhere around 45 degrees if we were so inclined. We can also scale it to make the texture larger or smaller. So I have to really slide my mouse pretty far, but now you can see those checkers are a lot smaller. So it's just a way that you can intuitively adjust a texture right here in your viewport without having to worry about going into your surface properties and clicking on some buttons. Now next we have mesh paint mode. When you enter this mode, you're going to get a nice little window that allows you to change a variety of, set, uh, of settings for controlling what color you're going to be painting, uh, the radius of your brush, the strength of your brush, and so on and so forth. However, demonstrating this would require that I did some setup on the back end. In order to see the results of a mesh paint, you have to have a material which has a vertex color operator inside of it. Now, currently, none of these meshes do, so demonstrating it here is not going to work out for us. Now, next to this, we have static mesh mode. This is kind of a way to help you scatter static meshes across the surface of your level. Now, to give it a real quick demo, I'm going to open up the content browser, and we're going to search for rock, and let's click on static meshes, and if we take a look, here is our, here's a little S underscore UN rock underscore uh, SM black spire 05C. So I'm going to select that. We'll close out the content browser. Now, while I'm in static mesh mode, I can place meshes on my map by holding down the S key and left clicking. And it's just going to place those. Now, I have some settings in here as well. I can give them a little bit of pre-rotation and yaw, pitch, and roll. So we just punch in some numbers here, and it's just kind of like a, a predetermined rotation that will take place before the mesh is even placed. You also have a rotation min and rotation max, which allow you to kind of randomize rotation. So if we take our yaw and maybe set this to negative 30 and our max to positive 30. In fact, let's just do that for everybody. Or we could just set it to uh, 180 all the way down. So let's do negative 180 all the way down. And then negative 180 here for our min. And then we'll do positive 180 all the way down here. So we could get any rotation. It, it could be a, a wide variety of different rotations. Now, as I hold down S, oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's make sure I don't punch that into my value here. Make sure you have focus over here in your viewport. As I hit S and click, I'm getting different rotations with each rock that I'm dropping. Now, if you were clicking and placing objects just on the ground all the time, that would be more than enough. You'd be good to go. However, if, let's say we just set all these back over to zero, just as an example. So now all of our rotations are just set to zero. Also, I'm going to grab a more, kind of a more directed static mesh. So let's maybe get away from uh, this kind of organic rock. Let's grab something like, uh, do we have a statue? Surely there's a statue in here someplace. Yeah, here we go. So we got this little guy, this kind of Atlas statue. So let's say we want to place him. Now, if I just hold down the S key and click, I can place this guy right on the ground. No problem. But what happens if I hold down S and click on the wall? It places him against the wall, which is okay. It kind of looks a little cool, almost like he's Spider-Man in this case. But what if I wanted him to really be kind of, you know, sticking out of the wall? I can hold down Alt and S, and I can click, and it'll orient that static mesh along with the surface normal. So Alt, S and I can put these guys right along the wall. So that's just a quick look at static mesh mode, and that wraps up this quick kind of high-level discussion of the various modes that you can put the editor in.